And joining us now is Saul Weisenberg, former deputy independent counsel and Fox News contributor, and Tim Parlatore, former Trump attorney. Saul, is this decision supported by the evidence? Well, I certainly don't see how the part of the decision that imposes a $355 million judgment is supported by the evidence, because as the judge points out in the very first paragraph of his opinion, and as you pointed out, there's no loss from the bank. The loans were repaid. Now, certainly, you can legally engage in fraud uh, of all kinds, even if the victim doesn't lose money. But to impose a, a, a penalty of $355 million and to bar him for three years and his sons for two years seems to me to be completely out of proportion uh, to the actual loss here, which was zilch. And, you know, um, Tim, the, the New York decision uh, is basically saying that he misrepresented his wealth. Since when is that a crime? Although the Trumps will not, they will not uh, concede to that at all. And they were dealing with the most sophisticated, intelligent banks that knew exactly what they were doing. They got every penny. They made hundreds of millions of dollars. Exactly. And you're talking about a bank here that did their own due diligence and you know, testified that they knew what the true numbers were you know, based on their valuation. But also, we're not just talking about, you know, they, they say that there's you know, a million dollars in the bank when there's really five dollars in the bank. It's valuations that really come into, you know, what is the market value? What is people's opinions of the value? It's not something that is so set in stone. And so, you know, to, to then bring that to an intent to defraud where they would have qualified for these loans anyway, and clearly they qualified for them because they paid them all back. They paid them all back. But the, the interesting thing, Saul, is it meant the decision mentions Ivanka Trump. And reading this, Ivanka Trump was a thoughtful, articulate, and poised witness, but the court found her inconsistent recall, depending on whether she was questioned by the Office of the Attorney General or the defense suspect. So, so how could she be thoughtful and also suspect? I can't get inside the judge's mind, <laughs> but I have, a, I have a question for, for everybody which is where were all of these people during the 35 years before Donald Trump became a uh, announced candidate for president? Uh, wh why weren't these people investigating this alleged fraud? Um, people, if there's fraud going on, the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York, uh, the District Attorney's Office in Manhattan, it doesn't seem like they were doing their job at all. It appears that there was no effort whatsoever to even look at uh, former President Trump until he became a controversial political figure. And as you pointed out, the, D the attorney general it is really shocking and unethical she for her to be involved in this case when she ran for office on a platform of getting Trump, which, by the way, Alvin Bragg did and which, by the way, Fonnie Willis did as well. And, you know, Saul, you and I, I mean, you, you know, when I was elected DA or D, a judge, had I even said that line once, they would have removed me. But, 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 uh, Tim, what I'd like to ask you is I want you to take a listen to this sound where uh, the judge had signaled he was going to impose corporate death. Do we have that? All right. Um, well, apparently the judge has signaled he was going to impose a corporate death penalty. Uh, he was going to revoke the business certificates. He didn't do that. And the person was depressed. Yeah, it, it's interesting to uh, to read the decision where he is reinstating, uh, rev revoking that portion of the order uh, based on the fact that he's imposing all of these other, you know, so-called controls and giving uh, giving other people, you know, essentially government-appointed jobs to oversee the Trump uh, organization. And so, you know, by doing that and by, you know, really, um, you know, giving significant amount of money to a few people, uh, that is something that saves the business licenses. And, and Saul, what do you think the chances are on appeal with this case? I don't know enough about New York civil law, but it strikes me to be constitutionally extremely dubious 
to basically impose $355 million judgment in a case where there is no loss. That is just mind-boggling to me. I've never seen a case where that, that happened. And you know, Saul and Tim, none of us have because it never has happened. Anyway, thanks so much for being with us this evening.